they got a new toy. That's a pretty steep hill right there. It's a remote control. There's a guy down on the ground. We're running by remote. How about that. I'm told that some of those machines like that, actually I had a salesman come out and visit me one time years ago um, trying to sell one similar to that. I was told that uh, that thing will stick on an 80% slope. Now that's incredible. That's not an 80% slope there. But, uh, pretty neat, huh? They used one of those up there in Waynesburg at Walmart, and those slopes are up there. I hope to get up there sometime when, uh, a couple years ago I was up there and saw him working with that and those are those are 80 percent at least they are really steep they did it that was pretty neat Okay, here's the hill at Walmart they cut with those machines. You just look how steep that is. Pretty impressive, huh? Wanted to show you that. I don't know if it gets a lot steeper down here. They cut that last year and the year before. They didn't cut it this year. But that's uh, pretty, much, pretty much like that. So, there I'll... All right, wanted to show you that. We'll get back to the show. Well, how about that? RC mowers, 60 inch. I have some new information. This is remote controlled and uh, this is not a rental. They actually bought it. How about that? They were, they had, uh, were paying almost 7,000 a month for rental on the, one of those Ventrac machines to cut our hillside with and all around. So this machine cost $72,000. And uh, they figure they use, they were paying 7,000 at, uh, the prep plant for that Ventrac and also at our Laybell facility. So they figure a little over a year, this will pay for itself because they were uh, renting it two times a year here, two times at the prep plant, two times a year at Laybell. There you go, got a winch on it. about that and uh, this one is rated for a 50% slope and the hill he was on over here uh, the remote box gives you the percentage of the slope the hill he was on over here is a 42% hill how about that Pretty cool, huh? They took, uh, I don't know where the remote box is. They t I think they took it in the, it's belt driven. But uh, I think they took the remote box into the office. So it's not here. 
There you go. How about that? Pretty cool. Working on a regulator, couldn't move it. So I had to get right up against here, put 22 in the garage. They've got, uh, I think, number two traction motor went into uh, ground fault. So they got guys in there looking at it who uh, guys rebuild the uh, traction motors for us company from Ebensburg anyway he was talking to me while we were waiting to get that locomotive put in there I did not know the difference between an AC traction motor and a DC now I understood that AC and DC is different the input voltages are different or not maybe not the voltages maybe not one's AC one's DC anyway he told me inside the traction motors the DCs of course have brushes and stuff like that inside the AC motors they don't have brushes how about that just like a rotor and a ah Statter, is that the word he used? So that's the difference between an AC and, and the, uh, there's something in there and he didn't know exactly what that kept the AC motor from starting off like at full speed. It's kind of like a thing that, that ramps it up evenly. So anyway, how about that? He was telling me that they love to work on the EMD traction motors. They hate they absolutely hate, hate, hate working on GE traction motors. <laughs> he says they're all different. You see, EMDs are pretty much uh, the same. Uh, you can rebuild an EMD parts, put it on the shelf. When a bad one comes in, just swap it out. GEs, all different. They're all different. So he said that he hates, hates when GEs come in. Anyway, thought I'd share that with you. Okay, so the guys are under the, uh, they have a pit in there, they're under there, look, checking out the 22, uh, or number two traction motor, and uh, we'll go from there. See what happens. It's my quitting time, so I'm not gonna find out, I'm not gonna find out today. There we have it. Well, I thought I'd share this little tidbit of information with you. Um, anyway, the train left out of there, uh, <coughs> yeah, and I'm following him out. But uh, traction motors on these old EMD locomotives, uh, the amp gauge reading comes off the number two traction motor. Okay, so if you have to cut out number two traction motor, and they're cut out in sets, two and five on the depends on the locomotive but they're cut out in sets of two um, so you lose all your reading on your amp gauge if you cut out number two traction motor uh, that doesn't mean you're not getting amps on the other ones it just means it only reads off of number two uh, the newer locomotives they uh, you can cut out one traction motor also uh, the uh, amp gauge is amp gauge will continue to work if one cutout motor one motor is cut out how about that on our locomotives when you cut out two traction motors again you have to cut out two you can't cut out one of them uh, you lose your dynamic braking capabilities also on the newer locomotives you can cut out one traction motor and still have dynamic braking how about that
There you have it. The show's over.